I like bandsaws and have been tempted to build one for a while. But as I already have a very big old one, there was no good reason for such a project. This changed when I got some logs for free and planned to mill them into lumber for restoring my house. It is impossible to bring my historic bandsaw in a good position for milling, so I made plans for a new band mill. I decided to have a maximum cutting width of 70 cm and a maximum cutting depth of 20 cm. So unlike upright table bandsaws with their C-shaped frame, the frame here can go straight from one wheel to the other. This frame also supports the wheels on both sides and that is a good thing because it can hold a lot more blade tension. First, I made the wheels from 21 mm plywood with reinforcements along the circumference and in the middle. I used ball bearings of the type 6004 because they fitted on a 20 mm steel rod that I already had. While gluing the wheels, I had to get rid of some initial wobbling. The construction of the wheels follows the ideas of Matthias Mandel from woodgears.ca. The whole project is inspired by his work. For turning the wheels round, I had to improvise a bit. The hard plywood forced me to make my own special chisel. Then I glued on the rubber belt that once was a bicycle tube. To mount the wheels in the frame, I carved slots in the inside of the frame, where I inserted iron profiles with holes for the shafts. Here the wheel that will be driven by the motor. The other wheel is mounted in slots as well, but the iron profiles are connected, forming a small frame that can be pressed outwards for tensioning the blade. It was a bit difficult to align the wheels horizontally. I took one of the beams of the frame as reference and tried to adjust the wheel mount as good as possible. I didn't bother to check the vertical alignment, but hoped that I had cut the slots in the frame at the same position. The saw blade I'm mounting here for a test is an original Logosol LM Pro saw blade with a length of 4246 mm. It's quite rigid, so the blade tension will have to be high. The tensioning is done with a nut on the threaded rod on the left wheel mount. My first intention was to use the band mill directly in the woods. So I tried to mount a 4 horsepower combustion engine. It became clear that it would be difficult to start the engine and the load and that it also produces heavy vibrations. There may be solutions, but I decided to try at first an electric motor, even if that would mean some limitations to the outdoor use. Then I spent some time thinking about the best way to hold and lift the main frame of the saw. Finally I decided to have two posts with threaded rods and handles. Moving the main frame up and down is done on each side separately. That will be more work than with a mechanism that does both sides at once, but will make it easier to adjust the blade and will make it possible to set it at a small angle.
When the construction seemed ready, I painted everything and reassembled the saw. I wasn't perfectly satisfied with the wheel mounts, especially the ball bearings seemed to me as if they could work themselves loose during time, but I had to go on. Here the positioning of the electric motor. It has 3.8 kW and turns with 2800 rpm. The transmission with a V-belt will make the saw blade wheels turn with 800 rpm, which means a velocity of 24 meters per second for the blade. The posts with the threaded rods for lifting get connected to the wings, as I call them. They will hold the mainframe. One post is mounted on a horizontal beam with four wheels that ride sideways on a diagonally cut profile. The other post has only one pair of wheels on its bottom. The two posts with their wings are attached to the mainframe. I used many threaded screws with wing nets to give it maximum stability and to be able to take it apart easily. Finally putting on the saw blade and tensioning it in the manner I already mentioned. I almost forgot to install the blade guides. These ones with five ball bearings each aren't my original design. I had to go through three different designs until I was satisfied. Then I fetched a short with thick lock to test the saw. I prevented it from rolling away by clamping it to some beams that were screwed directly into the wooden floor of the workshop. Okay, power on, let's see what it can do. That wasn't bad for a start. After I had milled some logs in that manner, I decided to try another method with the saw fixed and the logs sitting on some of my platforms and tracks. Standing on the other side now, I realized that I definitely needed a cover for the front of the saw. So, the bandmill works, but still needs to be improved in several aspects. <laughs> 